Hi folks, I'm gearing up for a new phase of testing and uh, I want to give you a little update on the uh, the cells we've been testing for the last three days. Uh, this is the first one and I tested it this morning when I when I got up. It was at 1.054 uh, volts and it tested it at 43.8 uh, milliamps. And this cell here is the second one and I tested it this morning and it was at 1.087 and it tested at 75.4 milliamps. So uh, we're going to test it, test them again now. And so here's the first one and it's at uh, 1.028. I'm getting ready to flip to 1.029. All right, so we'll test it right there. There we go. Three, two, one. Forty-three something. Again, same as it was. And this one now is at one oh four four. Alright, one oh four four. And we're just switching to one oh four five. And it was at seventy five point four milliamps last time. So and this time we have three can you see that? Yeah. Three, two, one. 75 again, 75.1 I think. Alright, I'll be back. Alright, now I'm back with another one and in this one I've got a membrane here that's titanium dioxide on both sides of it. Uh, it's been curing in this Tupperware in here for three days and so we're going to build another cell and see how that works. So I've got the uh, membrane on the uh, graph oil but there's no graphite under there and we're going to uh, slip our zinc on top of this, no added water or anything. See what we get on this. Uh, let's test it at uh, 0.837. 0.837 and 5.6. Pretty low. Alright. I just took this thing apart again. Comes apart real easy if you let that cure. Even when I put water on it and everything, no sticking at all. Alright, let's put a little graph uh, fight on the uh, on the carbon side or on the graph oil now and test it again and see what we get. There we go. Now let's see what happens. Okay. Well, look at there. That made a huge old difference, didn't it? Alright, so we're at one point. Oh, we're slowly losing. See what kind of amps we got. Three, two, one. Forty-nine. Woohoo! Now there is a good one. Look at the difference that made. That's huge. All right, it's been three or four minutes, and it's charged back up ninety percent. And the voltage is point eight nine three and uh, slowly climb but we're going to test it right there and see what we get on the second charge all right and our amps are three two one forty four this is a nice cell it shows you the effects of of drying uh, not drying that uh, membrane but curing the membrane letting the uh, letting the uh, crystal structure form in there. I did the same experiment and the and we're getting uh, 10 to 15 milliamps out of it. Now we're getting almost 50. So if, if this one improves like the other crystal batteries do, which it should, 
and we started at 50 and we get seven times the improvement where's that going to put this at and I think we can improve on this by eliminating the paper and just doing it right on the on the metal like we like the other ones and just let that cure out first before you put the cell together that's what I'm going to build next I'll be back all right I'm back again it's been three or four more minutes and the battery's back up to 90 percent charge and we are at 0.882 all right 0.883 so we'll measure it right there and see whether the voltage bump up or the amps bump up again three two one 50. Uh huh. See, they're starting to climb already. Now, this is going to dry out because it's not encapsulated. We've got free water under there that's going to evaporate. Alright, I'll be back. Alright, I'm back again. And this time I've put the little uh, battery in a plastic bag. And uh, there's little tips on the corners here hold the bag open. And the uh, and my uh, electro alligator clip hooks right onto that and I can just reach in here and measure this so let's conserve our water and now we are climbed to 0.885 and it's and this again it's just a, it's been three four minutes all right so now let's discharge it again and see what we get see how fast this thing's going to go. Ready? 3, 2, 1. 50.6 again. Or 3 or 4. Wow. And so there's uh, some nice uh, readings, huh? Alright. I'll be back. Alright. I'm back. And I'm set up to build what I think is going to be a really good cell. It's even simpler than, it, than what I've got here is just some uh, pure white glue couple ounces of it in a Tupperware container with about tablespoon, no, two tablespoons of uh, graphite in it and it was before and I've got a, a brand new uh, copper and graphoil electrode a lot of graphite in it should hold a lot of current and I'm not going to let it set at all I'm just going to then I'm just going to dip it straight down and into some borax and set that glue just like that and that's all there is to it now I have to set that for let it cure for 24 hours and tomorrow we'll test that and I bet that that's a kick-ass cell now I gotta do the titanium dioxide one nice thing about using straight to uh, straight to white glue it's thick enough that you don't have to worry about the uh, titanium dioxide or the graphite from, from settling out. So now we're going to do this plate here, same way as the other one. Now I want this to be the, the front side, and I don't have another brush handy, so I'm going to use my finger. All right, that's a fairly even coat right there. Let's dip it down in there. simple huh it's, now we're going to test these uh, batteries it's been uh, an hour probably since we tested this one that's the new one we just made with the separator paper that was aged cured whatever you want to call it and let's see what our bolts are here get inside the bag yeah. bolts are 0.942 and our amps are 3, 2, 1, 42, 6. So far we're still 49, 1, then 43, then 50.6, then 50.3, and then 42.6. Now, let's test the uh, 
This is the uh, second cell that we made. It has a double graphite layer on it. It's now a couple of days old. Alright, 1031 and Amps on 3, 2, 1. 68.2, I think. Alright, I'll be back. Alright, I'm back again. And this time I've got the, uh, this is the chart for the second crystal cell. The one that has the double graphite layers in it. And this is after 34 uh, charge cycles. And you can see it be, uh, that it shows the, really the same trend as the first cell did. It re comes up to a little, up to a peak, drops off, builds to another peak, drops off, builds to another peak, drops off and builds to another peak. It's restructuring itself, I think as it dries out and I think by conserving the water in the cell we can straighten this line out here and hopefully at a higher peak and uh, we haven't it's been another hour or so since we tested the cells and so we're going to run through those real quick and see what we got and this is the first one exactly the same as it was last time 105.4 okay. 3, 2, 1, 38 alright let's go to the this is our second cell, the one that we've got the graph here on. Let's see what we're at here. Our volts are 10102, and our amps are 3, 2, 1, 77. Uh -huh, another high, we're almost at 80. Oh, we hit 81 actually earlier. All right, I'll be back. All right, I'm back with a summary of where we're at so far. And thanks to some fortuitous tests and uh, a lot of long hours of... Uh, we've now got a solid state biocell with some great characteristics to it. Uh, first of all, it's self-charging. It's number one, one right there. But now that, we, that we've eliminated uh, free water in it, we've got a battery that can use uh, without worrying about anything leaking out of it, or we're using the glue as a source of water. So that really simplifies, really simplifies it, and the battery just seals itself. You just paint the electrodes and stick them together. No separator paper. That's a way simpler battery right now. Now we're getting uh, really much better gains in power. And now we've gotten 7 to 1 out of it. And we don't even know if that's the peak yet or not. We're still using water, of course. And water is important. But because there's no electrolytes in it. And because the water is all structured water. So we should have even less corrosion. The borax crystal structure in there it just changes state as the semiconductor switches on and off. This is going to be extremely long life, and we can already tell that. The first cell, we've tested it for 62 plus uh, cycles, and it, the last time it peaked was at like the 58th or 59th cycle. Anyway, uh, and then other than its long life as just as a battery, the thing is so simple that you can just take it apart and clean the uh, electrodes. Of course, so I've already shown you how simple it is to build. I mean, just some glue and some graphite and some titanium dioxide and paint it on there and dip it in some borax and then the, the last but not least it's it's very cheap to build I just bought these these are 40 galvanized steel plates I got them at Home Depot and they had a price reduction on them they were 88 cents and now I paid 82 cents for them and I used to do uh, battery tests on on galvanized steel like this and you can clean these things at least a dozen times, sand them, sand the oxidation and deposits off before you have to uh, switch out plates. This should make a battery that lasts a very long time. All right, I uh, will be back. Here's the plastic bags I bought for the cells. I got a hundred of them uh, on Amazon for uh, ten bucks. Provide good cell separation uh, for the batteries, and I'll just stack all the cells up and put it or put a rubber band around them. And it also allows me to uh, put a little water down in there if I if I need to, and uh, uh, they're resealable. Well, I had more to add, but I'm out of time. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time.